What does $450 get you? Uh, for a lot of people, that's legitimately a car payment. Uh, it's a suit for some places. Uh, it's a really, really nice dinner with your family. It is, you can get a decent handgun. You can get a Glock for 450 bucks. You can get a Walter Creed for 450 bucks, or less, actually. Or, you can get this. What is this? This is a Hinderer XM18. That's what this is. Uh, this is hands down the most I have ever spent on a knife. And I don't regret it. At all. A single bit. Truly, I don't. Um, what do you get for $450? Uh, that's a good question. So let's talk about that. You get, uh, it's not reversible pocket clips as you can see. Uh, you get tip up or tip down carry, which is reversible. Uh, you unscrew these little screws right here and here and you just flip where the clip is and then you put the tab spacer in wherever the empty hole is. I prefer tip up carry, that's just me. Uh, you do not get to switch it over to left hand as you can see. Uh, there are a lot of aftermarket uh, parts for the XM series, so perhaps you can find um, scales that will take it on the other side. We get a lanyard hole. Uh, we get a titanium back. We get a honestly the nicest G10 front scales I've ever seen. <clears throat> we get an S35 uh, VN steel, and we get. Quite frankly, one of the nice, the nicest knife I have ever held. Uh, quality is one of those things that's hard to describe. It's one of those, you pick it up and you feel it. Uh, if you guys haven't driven or ridden in a luxury car, the driving experience is fantastic. The car is quieter, it hugs the road better, the seats are more comfortable, the fuel economy is marginally about the same but the overall driving experience is just better. And I say that as a man who has had a $60,000 car for one year and a month, and I have put over 20,000 miles on it because I do a lot of driving. So sometimes paying more is worth it. I truly believe that this is the case where paying more for me was worth it. Uh, this is blue. I, I love blue, you all know that. Uh, the blue anodized titanium, and we've got blue black uh, G10 here. Let me see if you guys can see this. It's hard to make out. It's hard to make out the blue in the G10, but we'll try. Let's see if you guys can see that. But there's tiny, tiny little blue flecks in there. It's not the most blue ever, but it is certainly enough for my taste. Um, I do have I do have a quibble with this knife. I think it's a pretty reasonable quibble is uh, as we look back here, when you hold the knife to open it like so, if your finger is touching this lock bar at all, you are not getting it open. You have to make sure your finger is not on the lock bar and you have to hold the knife like so. This is not how I typically open a knife. And I bruised up my thumb trying to figure this out. How the hell do I get this thing open? Well, you cannot have your fingers on the lock bar at all. If you do, the knife is not opening. And it actually took me some forum searching to figure that out. I had to look up why doesn't my XM flipper open or uh, thumb st stud open. And, and I found that out, that if I'm touching the lock bar at all, that this thing just will not open. Uh, a really cool thing about the Hinderer knives is there are a lot of aftermarket parts for it. I can change the front scale I can change the hardware, even the pivot on the knife. I can add in a nice back spacer instead of uh, uh, the open spacers like we've got here. I can get them in different colors. I can get different design clips in different colors. There's all sorts of things that you can do to truly make this knife one of your own. Uh, the jimping along the spine here and further up is fantastic. We've got a choil here for your finger right up here on the blade. You can see that there. 
This knife is a beautiful knife. I am absolutely fantastic and happy with this knife. It is my number one carry knife right now, even though it is bigger than the trend I was trying to go with for daily carry knives. And the reason is just the quality. Uh, this G10 does not feel shoddy, it doesn't feel cheap. It feels strong, hefty, sturdy, reliable. It's nice and grippy too. Uh, I don't feel like my hands are gonna slip out on this thing at all. I don't feel like if I was wet or muddy or bloody or sweaty that I would have any problems uh, gripping this knife. It is fantastic. It came out of the box hair cutting sharp and ready to go. Um, if you get one of the flipper models, which this one obviously is not, um, I would suggest doing a little reading quickly on how to deploy it because apparently there's a, certain, or there's a particular way to press your finger against the flipper in order to properly and easily deploy it and I've, I've, I read some articles that showed that there are some people who are having issues with their deployment and I wouldn't want that to happen to you. This is a $450 knife. Is this knife necessarily better than something else? Not necessarily. Will a, toy, will a, will a Toyota, two-year-old Toyota Corolla get you from A to B? Yes, it will. It will do it fantastic, and you have absolutely nothing to complain about because a Toyota Corolla is a beautiful car. Will a Mercedes GLC get you from A to B? Yes, it will, and you will enjoy the experience a lot more. Uh, once you get past about the $200 range, that has been my experience on knives, it's the intangibles that start to make the difference. Like I said, the fit and finish on this knife is fantastic. How it feels, the quality, how it uh, feels in my hand, when it opens, when it closes, the lockup, feeling how tight it is, feeling how positive, uh, the, ah, got my fingers in the wrong place, how positively it engages, how easy it is to just flip my thumb and just press the blade down back and forth, back and forth. Those are the things you're paying for. You're paying for the, for the name as well, no doubt about it. You are paying because you got the hinderer horse on here. No, no question about that. But there's a reason why they're so popular and the reason is because they're great. It's, a, it's as simple as that. If this knife is not in your price range and you're just here to look and drool, uh, don't feel bad. For a long, long time, this knife was not in my price range either. And quite frankly, it is only because my wife spoils me to ridiculous degrees that I'm able to afford a knife like this. Uh, look at my other videos. There are other knives that I have showcased that are significantly cheaper, that perform tasks almost as well, and you should be happy to carry them as well. If you have questions about this knife, please let me know. I got this over at Blade HQ which often has a supply of his knives in stock. I'll put the link down below. If you have questions, comments, concerns, peanut gallery, let me know below. I'll do my best to answer you. If you would like to see more of my videos, please like and subscribe and we'll keep pumping these things out. I know I've been a little slow, but we're in a new year. We've got a new setup going on here and we are gonna keep pushing these things out. Thanks for watching.